Well guys, we are going to continue with the fourth video where we are going to learn about uh, reaction mechanisms. So uh, we know that chemical reaction may occur in one-way reaction or reversible. So example of one-way reactions is the formation of nitrogen dioxide via the nitrogen monoxide and oxygen gas. While the reaction examples of a reversible reaction is a production of ammonia from nitrogen and also hydrogen gas. So usually we symbolize a one-way reaction by using one-way arrow and the reversible reactions using a reversible arrow. So in this chapter, we are going to stress more on the one-way reaction. However, in the next chapter, we are going to stress more on the reversible reactions. So in the one-way reactions, process may be taken in multiple steps and therefore irreversible, irreversible back to the reactant as they might involve in steps that require higher activation energy. For example, in the reaction stated 2NO plus O2 give 2NO2, the step or simply mechanism for the reactions of nitrogen monoxide and oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide can be described below. So we have the step 1, 2NO first react to form N2O2 and N2O2 further react with O2 to form 2NO2. So therefore, you can cancel in between them. So NO2, N2O2 and N2O2 cancel. We have 2NO react with O2 to form 2NO2. So usually in the mechanism, the overall equations can be gotten back, uh, gotten back from this by cancelling uh, each of the step 1 and step 2. So in the process of the formation of nitrogen dioxide, so N2O2 is formed temporarily but will not form as a product in the end of the reaction. So therefore, N2O2 is also known as intermediate, a substance that appears during the mechanism of the reaction but not the overall balance equations. Now for each step of the reaction, the re equations can be described as so for mechanism in step one, so the re reaction equation is this. So rate equations is rate is equals to k and mole square. Whereas in step two, two n two o two plus o two give two n o two. Rate equation can be written as rate is equals to k n two o two times o two. So for the rate equation proposed for each step in the series of mechanism, the order of reaction can be determined straightforward by the stoichiometry coefficients. So from the mechanism uh, equation step one. The order of reaction is a second order with respect to NO, but in step 2, order of reaction is first order with respect to N2O2 and also O2. Now, this is something a little bit different from what we have determined, uh, mentioned earlier, because as we mentioned, uh, when we, if you still remember what we mentioned earlier, we say is that the order of reactions cannot be directly taken from the stoichiometric coefficients. However, in this case, this is different because we are talking about mechanism, a detailed step-by-step -step reaction on how does the reactions carry on. So therefore, in this case, when we discuss about the mechanisms, the order of reactions can be directly taken from the stoichiometric coefficients. So note that the series of step above arrow is written as the word slow and fast, which can be interpreted as slow steps of the reaction and the fast step of the reactions. So in determining the order of each of the reactants involved, we can make use of the mechanism to determine the overall order of each reactants, since we say that slow step is a rate determining step. Therefore, the rate equation that can represent the overall reactions is rate is equal to NO square. So this is the energy profiles of the reactions where we have a 2NO react with O2 to form 2NO2. So note that there are two lobes in the energy profile indicates that the reaction occurred in two steps. If the reaction is in three steps, you have three lobes and so on. The intermediate is formed based on the first loops and it takes act another activation energy to go under the second loops. So this is how we sketch the energy profiles for the mechanism for these reactions. Next, we are going to have a look at the effect of temperature on reaction kinetic. So temperature often has a major effect on the reaction rate. In general, increasing the temperature of reaction increases the average speed of particles, therefore increasing the frequency of collisions. Arrhenius proposed that every reaction has energy threshold that colliding molecule must exceed in order to react. So this minimum collision energy is called as the activation energy, the energy required to activate the molecule in the state form, which reactant bond can change into product bonds. So many of the chemical reactions near room temperature approximately double their rate of reaction with a 10 degrees Celsius rise in room temperature. 
So the effect of temperature towards the rate of reaction can be further explained by using Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So from the graph above, you can see here. So this is heated at 300 Kelvin, and this is heated at 800 Kelvin. So you can see that in 800 Kelvin, you have more area that have energy greater than the activation energy. You have more energy greater than the activation energy. So therefore, uh, we have a more higher rate of reactions. So this is how you make use of the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curve to explain about the rate of reaction. Since there are more particles that have energy greater than activation energy. So generally, the rate of reaction increases with temperature as an effect the, temp the rate increased by the rate constant of temperature. So the re dependence of the rate constant of reaction on temperature can be expressed by using Arrhenius equation, where we have K, a rate constant, is equals to A epsilon negative Ea over Rt. Where K here is the rate constant, A is the Arrhenius constant, T is temperature in Kelvin, Ea is activation energy, and R is the gas constant. So Arrhenius equation shows that the rate constant is directly proportional to Arrhenius constant, therefore to the collision frequency. In addition, because of the minus sign associated with the exponent of Ea over Rt, the rate constant decreases with the increase of activation energy, hence increase with the temperature. So in another word, in order to increase the rate constant K, you must have a low activation energy or a high temperature. Arrhenius equation can be used uh, can be then expressed as the natural logarithm of both sides in the equation, where the equation can be expressed as ln k is equal to ln a negative e a over rt. So in VH Lynchman, you get ln k is equal to negative e a over r one over t plus a. So this expression is compared to y equals to mx plus c. So when you plot a graph of ln k against one over t, so you get a negative gradient graph which can be then used to determine the activation energy of the reaction, where the gradient of the graph M is equal to Ea over R. So using this method, activation energy of a reaction can be calculated. So for example, the table below shows how rate constant K varies with the temperature between hydrogen and iodine. By plotting suitable graph, determine the activation energy for the reactions. So in order to determine activation energy, we need to recalculate the data from the temperature and also rate constant here into 1 over t and also ln k. So rearrange and calculations here, you get all this. So now plotting the graph, you get the following graph. So you can see that we can start off from 0 0.001 to 0 0.0019 in order to make our graph to look bigger. So after plotting the graph and get the gradient line, so we can take, we can use the gradient to calculate activation energy. So from the graph, the gradient is negative 13.6 minus negative 9.6 over 0 0.00174 minus 0 0.0015, which is equals to negative 22316. So negative 22316 is equals to Ea over R. So Ea is equals to positive 185 kJ per mole. So this is how we are making use of the graphical methods to determine the activation energy by plotting the suitable graph. Other than using uh, graph, we can also use the uh, calculations methods to determine activation energy. So if you are given two different rate constant at two different temperature, rearranging the equations will give ln k1 minus ln k2 equals to negative Ea over Rt plus ln A. So negative Ea over R. So in here, ln A minus ln A will become zero. So this will give ln k1 minus k2. So law of ln is similar to law of log. So minus can become divide. So pulling off the Ea over R, you get one over uh, minus one over t1 plus one over t2. So rearranging them, you get one over t2 over one minus one over t1. So this is the equations that can be used to calculate quantitatively uh, activation energy without plotting the graph. So finally, we are going into, uh, these are examples of the rate constants of how we calculate. 
So this is how uh, the rate constant of the first order is 3 by 4, 6 and 10 more negative 2 second minus 1. So what is the rate constant at 350 kilo, uh, Kelvin if the activation energy is 50.2 kJ per mole? So this is how you substitute by it. So we use log K1 over K2 is equal to Ea over R, 1 minus 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So substitute each of the value accordingly, you get the K is equal to 0 0.703 so second minus 1. So finally, we're going to explain the role of catalyst in the reactions. So a catalyst is a substance which alters the rate of reactions without changing its chemical composition. Therefore, the chemical formula remains the same after the reaction. In most of the chemical reaction, catalyst is used to add up the speed of reactions. However, some of the catalysts also may be used to slow down. A catalyst works by providing alternative path for a chemical reaction to take place which requires a lower activation energy. However, it will not affect the enthalpy change of the chemical reactions. So this is the uh, energy profile for endo and exo. So in here, uh, this is the activation energy of an uh, uncatalyzed reaction. Whereas here, uh, we have this one and this one is the activation energy of catalyzed reaction. Okay, so in here, uh, catalyst lower the activation energy and from the angles of the Arrhenius constant, so lowering the activation energy will increase the rate constant of the reactions. However, a catalyst do not initiate the reactions, rather it accelerates the reactions that is already occurring. Last but not least, we also have what we call as autocatalysis. If the product of the reaction acts as a catalyst itself, the product is also known as autocatalyst. For example, in the reaction between manganese ion and tin ion, mm -hmm. uh, this is a type of reaction where it becomes a catalyst. So the Mn2 plus will become a catalyst of the reaction, hence increase the rate of reactions. So if you have already done your NPM experiment number 2, so this is more or less of what you will get for your experiment, uh, titration experiment. So the first two drop, the purple color of KMnO4 decolorize slowly, then the following drop, it will decolorize more rapidly, however towards the end, it will then decolorize slowly again. So this is the graph of autocatalysis, where initially you have a low rate of reaction. However, in the middle, when you have start to have catalyst, the rate of reaction is becoming higher. And towards the end, since the concentration of the reactant has become lesser, so the rate of reaction is lowering back. Okay, okay so with this, that is all for the chapter 5. So I guess um, we're going to move to the next chapter, chapter 6 in our next coming video. Thank you.